Carnivorous plants are wonders of creation, specifically designed to catch insects. While people believe that it is really difficult to raise carnivorous plants, it is indeed very simple if you design a specific style of garden or container to grow them in. By using the proper medium and proper method of drainage, your carnivorous plants can flourish in your yard and provide beauty to any garden as well as pest control. You're going to need an assortment of carnivorous plants and you could buy a bin that's already planted, you know, although the peat moss it's in is not very deep, so you may want it in deeper soil so it can thrive a lot better. And you can get these from your local carnivorous plant dealer, or you can probably find it in a nursery somewhere, usually in the springtime. So anyway, that's one of the things you want to get. You could also order them offline, or you could buy them individually, and sometimes some um, home improvement stores have them, or just local nurseries will also. So you have a lot of places where you can choose from to get carnivorous plants. And in front of me we have an assortment of Venus flytraps, a few hooded pitcher plants, and some sundews. And these are some of the plants we're going to work with today. You will also want a plastic bin. This one in front of you has been excavated from the attic and notice how the lid is broken. Bins like these become useless for storage since you can't really cover everything to protect it. So you can always throw the lid and use the bin. This tub has been started about three or four weeks ago and so far only a carnivorous plant has been put into it. But if you look at it, it has been thriving after just a three or four weeks. Notice how the carnivorous plant in the bin looks really healthy and some of the leaves are really large and you have a nice red one on the inside. So this is one of the things you can look forward to by properly planting your carnivorous plants. This ceramic pot doesn't have a drainage hole at the bottom and several months ago a purple pitcher plant was planted in there and notice how it just has one leaf right now that feels sickly. It was basically some sphagnum moss overlying some aquarium gravel and I figured that the sphagnum moss will soak up some moisture and the excess will drain into the gravel but being such a small pot and no drainage hole it would become either too dry because it was too small for pot the water would dry out fast or waterlogged because there is no drainage hole and I tried to drain out a lot of the water so now this plant is ready to be planted in a more proper fashion. You will also want to water the plants as soon as you plant them and I would recommend getting distilled water from a grocery store or using a tub of rainwater because tap water has chemicals that aren't even safe for aquariums or humans these days so it's definitely not going to be good for your plants and they will die if you use tap water so keep that in mind also. You'll also want to get a bag or two depending on the size of your basin or tub of sphagnum peat moss from your local hardware store or lawn and garden center and you will use this as the entire medium. I know some websites and other sources may indicate using perlite or other stuff but re in reality all you need is the sphagnum peat moss and nothing else. Before you start sticking the sphagnum peat moss into the basin so you can plant your lovely carnivorous assortment you want to drill a few holes close to the bottom for drainage and while there is no rule on the diameter of the hole, you don't want something too tiny that would not drain efficiently and you don't want something too big that would cause a lot of the peat moss to flow out. And what we picked here is a quarter inch drill bit which seems like it would be a good balanced size. And you don't want to drill the hole all the way at the bottom. You probably want to drill it about three or four inches from the bottom and this way there will be a little water for the hot dry summers but not too much water to let it become waterlogged and drown out your carnivorous plants. Now you'll start by taking the lid and chucking it because you really don't need that. And then you're going to take this, I'd rather use the edges because usually people like to see a wider view so you don't want to disrupt it with holes. And you can line this up about three or four inches and start the drilling. Yeah. 
And here we have a lovely hole, but one hole is not enough. Okay, you're going to want to also drill the other side, roughly the same height. And normally I'm very meticulous, but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to eye it, even though I like the holes to be perfect, but it looks roughly about the same height. Okay, and you know, two holes should suffice. If you feel uncomfortable, you could drill another couple or something. But uh, two holes, about a quarter inches, I feel would be good. It would slowly let the water drain out. Okay, you're going to want to start by adding your peat moss to the tub. So you'll want a little shovel of some sort to shovel it in from the bag. And you are going to scoop up a little bit of your spastic peat moss. And yes, I did say spastic just to be funny. You'll take it in nice clumps and dump. And if you're more daring, you can just pour as much as you want to in here, but that could be a little messier. But you could actually employ both methods, depending on which is the most efficient at the time, based on how much moss is in the bag. You're going to spread the peat moss to be nice and level, but one thing you could also do is make a little depression. So when you add the water, you can make sure it drains towards the bottom. And putting only a two and a half gallon amount of distilled water would soak up in the peat moss and won't be too little, but it won't be too much that's going to start over draining out the side. So if you want to move this somewhere else, it would be less messy. So that's a good thing. And one thing you could do if you want to transport is put some tape to cover the holes and this way you don't have to worry until you get it to its rightful location. Okay, so you have a hole right over here behind the grass and you want to make sure you cover it if you want to transport it so that when you fill it up with water it's not going to spill over and make a mess. Not that there would be any problem, but if you're going to put it in a car or something you want to stay tidy and you don't want it to make a mess in your car. It's the safer thing to do. So you'll take your tape, cut off a piece, and just simple masking tape should be good enough. And you're gonna tape it. And you'll do the same to the other side and make sure all your holes are covered if you did more than two drill holes. If you were to choose to collect rainwater to water carnivorous plants, you will see that over time the water gets really gunky and grungy and has some nice mosquito larvae flourishing inside it. So by building a bog garden in the methods shown here, you will be avoiding the risk of contracting West Nile virus or any other form of disease, not to mention the pesky mosquito bites which really annoy you all summer long. Here you can see a close-up of the mosquito larvae and how they love to swim and frolic in the stagnant water of the abyss of your cistern. And that is one of the reasons why you do not want to collect rainwater for your carnivorous plants. And by setting up a bog garden in the manner shown in this video, you will eliminate the need for watering them during the hot summer dry months because they will still have some water at their disposal. And this is one of the benefits of setting up a carnivorous plant bog garden versus the traditional way of sticking them in pots and watering them with rainwater. Now if you decide to use a two and a half gallon container to water initially before you let the rain take its toll on the watering for you, you will want to make sure you drill a hole or cut a slab near the top so that as it's draining air can fill in from the top and you would have a nice smooth flow of water versus a jerky flow. So we're going to use a blade, you know, being a guy we have to use the most sharp thing we can find. And you're going to take it and cut a slit. And what is this cheap knife my friend let me borrow? Let's try again. Okay, so we cut a little slit in there now. And let us cut another slit this way. 
Okay, I think that's big enough, even though we would like to go crazy and cut one slit after another. Ha ha ha. Okay, now we're in business to start filling this up. You want to take the front thing and yank it open. That's a lot quicker. And fortunately, for <clears throat> fortunately, sphagnum moss soaks up the water like a sponge, so it will eventually slowly become nice and moist. But on a basin or tub this big, you probably want more than just one, two and a half bottle container. Now here we have a bottle which we did not put a slit in the top, okay? So because we did not put a slit, observe when we try to drain water. The blade. Notice how the bottle is caving in because there's no water Air. coming in to fill it up. And now my lovely assistant, well, not lovely, okay, if you, if you take the blade, much better. Okay, you're going to want to take your spade and make sure this is nice and smooth so you can start putting plants in there. Okay, we are going to start with our sickly purple pitcher plant. So we're going to take Hermie, keep, the, keep some of the median around him, and I think I will put him here. If we make this part the foreground and that part the background, and since purple pitcher plants don't get very large, he would make a nice foreground plant. And because they get larger than Venus flytraps, I'm going to put them off to the side, and it's going to be a lovely location for this plant. And you can spread some peat moss around it. And you can also push it in there if you like. And remember, these will go dormant in the wintertime, but they will come back every spring. And the lovely thing about a bog garden, you don't need to do a lot of maintenance. You can probably trim the dead leaves and leave it at that. And it will live and thrive with the bugs in your area and just the nice weather you have in your location. Okay, so we put the tub on a chair, we put plexiglass between it so that it doesn't stay in the chair, you know, ruin the upholstery. And we are actually going to slowly take our pick from a few of the plants. And we're going to put them in our tub. Okay, I'm going to take this tiny Venus flytrap so that my friend who's letting me swat, snag a few will not feel like he's at a loss. And I'm going to put this Venus flytrap in the foreground because it would make a lovely foreground plant. But I might put it a little further 
to be more of a centerpiece. You're going to make sure it's buried, okay? And sprinkle a little bit of peat moss around it. And if you notice, the water hasn't yet soaked up, so you're going to make sure you need to water this so that it doesn't dry out before the next rain. And we're going to do the same with the sundew. We're only going to take one, so our friend who let me swipe some off him is not going to feel like he's at a loss. And they're so tiny, I grabbed two. So we are going to take these sundews and separate them so we can have them in two different locations so that they can fill up nice rosettes as they tend to form. One I will place over here. And I'm not worried if they don't, you know, if the dew gets buried and they don't catch any insects because they'll come up next year nice and thriving. You know, it's late in the season at the moment. So, and the second one I'm going to plant over here. And now with the hooded pitcher plants, I'm going to take the one that's not doing too good because I can boast when it starts to thrive. Check out that root system. Now because of such a root system, for this one we're actually going to dig a hole and I'm actually going to put it off to the side. And one reason I'm doing that is I hope I can find a white hooded pitcher plant sometime, maybe in the spring, and I'll plant it over here. And I hope to eventually add some long leaf sundews and maybe a few other types of plants like maybe a butterwort. Unfortunately there is no pond in this bog for me to add a bladderwort but they are cool aquatic carnivorous plants. But we have the basics here and I look forward to seeing them in the spring. One more thing to add is that you saw that it's recessed in here, but you could also build it to where it bulges up a little bit. And this way, when things settle, like leaves and stuff, you don't want all the tannins to contaminate your basin. You're able to just let the wind blow them off. So that's one thing you could do, is just to have it nicely bulge over. And that's one thing you can do if you choose to. And if your preference is to have it recessed, feel free to do so. Four days after starting the carnivorous plant bog you can see that the peat moss has started to settle so that will have to be remedied in the near future but you can also see that the carnivorous plants are alive and they've actually started to grow a little bit. You can see that the sundew has already started to grow new leaves and you can see the nice little droplets of dew on the little hairs of each leaf so this sundew is looking pretty healthy and happy in its new environment. This sundew is also growing nice fresh leaf in the center and you can see that it's also happy in its new environment. The Venus flytrap also looks happy and healthy in its new environment. The pitcher plant hasn't shown any new leaves starting to sprout above the peat moss but surely it will survive. The pitcher plant, which was not doing good in its old pot, is now still alive, although it hasn't shown any new signs of growth. 
it will need to take a little longer to recuperate before it can start growing, but at least it's in a much better environment now and is sure to survive in the future. One of the things to worry about in transport is when you pick up the blue tub after it's been filled up with all the water and the peat moss, that it gets heavy and that it's been in the attic for years and dry rotted, it will crack. So this is one thing you have to be very careful about when you transport it to its permanent location. If you are worried about it, then I would recommend spending a fortune on a new tub at a uh, store and using that instead. Now that you have been equipped to successfully build your own carnivorous plant bog garden, you can enjoy these beautiful plants for years to come. Enjoy!